friends. I hope today or whatever time it is finds you well. My name is Jessie. Welcome to our homestead in the middle of the Ozark Mountains. I am so grateful to have you joining us this episode. It's been quite a bit longer than I had anticipated as far as our holiday break goes. Unfortunately, I was in the hospital with kidney stones a couple times. One of them threw me into preterm labor. So I was put on serious bed rest, but alas, she has made it to full term and I am off my bed rest. And when she comes, we are just going to welcome that moment with open arms. We have been snowed in for over a week, so I thought this would be the perfect time to create this video for y'all. So all practices and the kiddos that go to school, they were out and it was just a good moment to kind of settle in and prep for Valentine's Day. I know Valentine's Day isn't the most popular day to decorate for because it is just one day, but um, it is definitely still winter here and it just gives us an excuse to do slow crafts when we aren't able to go outside and it just ultimately makes the home that much more cozier. So for this episode, I'm going to show you the newest additions to our Valentine's decor. And of course, they are DIYs. A lot of the projects I'll be sharing with you in the midst of this episode and the following one are created with things that you most likely already have laying around the house. The next episode, I will have baking introduced. I keep talking about that, but I actually will be sharing with you one of my favorite cookie recipes. I think it'll be a fun one, so keep your eye out for that. But without further ado, let's get to what you came here for. Before I get started with any of my crafting, I like to set the mood around the house to kind of get me going and inspired. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is beginning with the kitchen. Switching out a few mugs or glasses on the shelving is one of the easiest ways to add a little pop of color and a little touch of the Valentine season. So I'm not the biggest fan of the color pink or red for that matter, but a few touches here or there, in my opinion, are enough to conjure up Cupid's angels just in time for the 14th of February. A little forewarning, I do make quite a few outfit changes as this was filmed over several days. Between the swollen ankles and feet and contractions, I just couldn't do it all in one day. No complaints here. I'm just glad to be able to be up on my feet once again. As a little side note, a lot of my kitchen Valentine's decor was given to me by my husband throughout the years on Valentine's Day. We've been married going on 17 years and I have learned that just telling them exactly what you want is the best way to go about getting exactly what you want. Considering my addictive behavior towards mugs, you know I can't feature my kitchen without sharing a little bit of my mug collection. In my opinion, it's hard to have too much of a good thing, and if those things make you happy, then the more the merrier. I guess that is if you are my kids and you're trying to put away the dishes and can't find 
any more spaces to fit the mugs. Maybe I'll put that on my running list of content to feature in the future. So it is officially time for our first DIY of 2024. So I absolutely love anything that is handmade, anything that is ceramic. I unfortunately don't know anything about making pottery. That is something that I want to get into until then. And for the time being, I am going to stick to making ceramic like things. So with Valentine's up and around the corner, I decided I wanted to make heart shaped ornaments. Everything I use for this project is linked below. There's also variations you can use with different products, but this is what I chose to do. So y'all know me and my cookie cutters. I decided the fastest and easiest way to make a heart shape would be through a cookie cutter. I had just purchased several new ones from the antique store and somehow they got misplaced and all I could find was this one. It really wasn't my favorite. I wasn't looking for the beveled edges. Side note really quick, vintage and antique stores are really great places to find really unique and affordable cookie cutters. Anyway, going back. The cookie cutter I was able to find just wasn't quite what I was looking for, so I decided to make my own out of foil and I wasn't happy with those results either. I really wanted it to look handmade and using the cookie cutter, it was just too perfect. And with the foil, it just, again, wasn't what I was looking for. So ultimately I decided to just take a knife and I very carefully cut out the shape that I was looking for. If I'm gonna go through the trouble of making something handmade, I wanna make sure that it looks handmade and that people wouldn't be fooled into thinking that it was store-bought. So this was the best approach that I found for what I was going for. Once my ornaments were fully dried, I mixed together soft pastels and a bakeable glaze. I just scraped a little portion of that pastel into powder form. How much will depend on how deep or light you want your color. I will say I purchased several different shades of reds and pinks, but ultimately I only ended up using one color. I noticed that as I went forward and added more and more glaze, the color got lighter and lighter until it finally faded to pink. So if you're able to find just a single pink or red and you're still wanting a variation in colors, just play with how much pigment you add to the glaze. Once we got them all painted and we were happy with the results, we popped them back into the oven. Again, follow the directions that are on your glaze bottle. Again, if you're going the exact same route that I chose, once you've got the color baked in and you take them out of the oven, you'll see that they are no longer glossy. If you are good with this, then you are good to move on to the next portion. For me, however, like I said, I really wanted it to have that ceramic look. So I went on with the final glaze layer. And again, all the products I use are in the bottom of the description of this video. Oh, I did forget to mention previously that I used a little dowel rod that I had in my baking drawer for the holes. You can use absolutely anything that you can find, but just be aware that this portion needs to be done before it's baked and or dried. And also the location of the hole will really depend on what you're able to do with it as far as hanging goes. While the glaze was drying, it gave me a good excuse to put my feet up, continue working on the baby blanket, and look out the window and watch the kiddos enjoy their snow day. So I am just super happy with the way that they turned out. I don't think you can really tell the difference between these and actual ceramic ornaments once they've dried. 
once finished you can use these ornaments in any ways i decided to replace the area where the christmas bells used to be and honestly i made them the exact same way i made the bells so i had this project specifically in mind when i left one of the limbs in the foyer inside the pot i knew i wanted to replace the ornaments with these hearts and i did so by simply tying a ribbon around them and hanging them just as you would any other ornament All in all, I think it turned out pretty well. I hope you don't mind this little slower vlog style video as I am forced to not go quite as quickly as I normally do. But yes, in keeping with the theme, we are still pregnant with baby I. A couple times we were sure she was about to make a very early appearance, but thanks to modern medicine, we were able to keep her in and now I feel like I am not able to get this girl out. So I am always a big proponent of themed pajamas, especially those that are holiday themed. And I've always done that for the kiddos for every single holiday. Unfortunately for me, my oldest feels that he has outgrown this tradition. So I usually get him a little something extra other than the PJs and it looks like this year he found those in the stash and has already broken into them. Either way, it's just a little something to light up their afternoon and something fun to wear for the Valentine season. Last year, Lola and I tried a new cinnamon salt dough recipe and turned it into a strand of heart-shaped garland. Unfortunately, I don't have any video content on that and I can't find the exact recipe, but if you look in the description box of this video, I have a recipe link that looks very similar. For this next project, not much creativity was required on my part. I found some heart-shaped wire plant stakes. Those are also linked in the description box. I grabbed one of my vining plants, stuck it in the pot, and simply went to town. I ended up switching the types of plants as I felt like the leaves were too big to really show off the shape of the heart. If you're wondering what type of plant this is, it's a Monstera Peru. It used to be a little bit more rare and last year it actually started making its way into the big box stores, at least in our area anyway. It's one of those things that keeps the plant world quite exciting. One minute they could be worth hundreds of dollars and the next second you can make a trip to your local hardware store and see that very same rare plant there, only to now be available to the masses. I'm planning on incorporating beginner plant tips in my next video, but if this is a plant you're interested in, I would say it would fall a little bit outside of the beginner category, but it is an easier plant to care for. So for this plant, I ultimately landed on the obvious choice, the philodendron heteraceum. I don't know why I didn't think of this in the first place. Its common name is the heartleaf philodendron. When I've seen these sold in grocery stores and big box stores, I've seen them for the most part just simply labeled as a philodendron in case you're wondering. I would say this falls very much so into the beginner category. I did happen to break one of the vines off when I was twisting it around the wire, but that is no problem because this type of plant will regrow itself in water and soil as well. There is a trick to it, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned for our next video. But that's just one of the many, many reasons that I absolutely am in love with plants. So for this next project, this is something you can normally buy online or in the stores pretty affordably. I kind of spiced this up a little bit. I had some paper that had little flex 
of roses within it and I thought that would make it a little bit extra special. I also enjoy a project like this because most people have all of these materials laying around their house and it's a simple enough project you can get your kiddos or grandkids involved in. If you happen to be snowed in like we have been, it's a really fun thing to keep little hands busy. On a side note, in my next video, I will be including a few more last minute DIY projects. I'd love to hear some of the things that you have or maybe include some of your ideas in my following video. Until then, let me show you how I use these strands. These can be used anywhere. You can hang them from your windows, in doorways, or from light fixtures like I did. We will definitely have baby I by then, so most likely Blake and I will be spending a quiet evening at home. We'll probably make ourselves one of our favorite homemade dinners, light a few candles, and just have hopefully a quiet evening at our dinner table to ourselves. So yes, that's the reason I chose to make our dining room a little extra special this year. I also found these really fun ornaments and decided to once again incorporate our plants and hang the ornaments on some of the branches of our larger plants inside of the dining room as well. hope y'all enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. I very much appreciate y'all. I know Valentine's isn't everybody's favorite holiday, but if anything, I hope that you would celebrate it at least for yourself. If you've got any questions about any of these projects or maybe any other question that you may have in your mind, just give me a shout and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I also wanted to extend a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has been reaching out. I don't at all want to sound ungrateful, but this past month has not been the easiest and just seeing the text messages, emails, and comments that I've been receiving from everybody, it just makes my days so much easier and I can just feel all the love. So thank you so much for that. My hope ultimately is that y'all can feel the same for me. I look forward to the next time we meet again. Stay tuned. This is essentially the former catch-all room that has now become Baby Eyes room. We're just still putting a few finishing touches. So that video is in the works, but will be up very soon. And like I said, plant-related content is also in the works. Until then, I hope that all finds you well. Until next time, bye for now.